So I just got this in the other day. It's an Ishapur 410 conversion of an SMLE. It was labeled from the dealer as a DP with a shiny bore, a shiny smooth bore, which it does have, but it is in fact not a DP rifle. This is an Ishi. It is stamped down here in the lower tang. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but we will try. Right there. However, it's not an Ishapur receiver. It's actually a 1914 Enfield. Get that in there. There. Or a manual focus camera, folks. It's not the easiest thing in the world. The um, it, it does also have a pl uh, uh, the magazine floor plates wood with the metal one up top in the receiver here. The wood is still notched as the 1914 would have been with the uh, aperture sight notch there. And in all brilliance of standardization, instead of just welding in the cut up mag cut off here, they just deleted it. So in theory, this could be converted back, but that's why I'm doing this video is to just start taking her apart, take a look underneath. Um, it is definitely not the smoothest of guns. But considering its long life and the rest of the condition with bits of wood missing, external pitting, like these are there. But for a couple hundred bucks that it was, and with the current actual DP ones with welded chambers or pin chambers being 400 plus tax shipping, I, couldn't, I can't complain about this. So, especially seeing that it is a 410 conversion. And before we get into it, the standard. Four ten, which we're gonna grab here. Two and a half. Nope. Four ten here. Drop her in. Won't it won't go in. It just straight up won't go in. And in my brilliant side, that little bit of force gets you to stick. That being said, through a three case, these are 1940 marked Canadian brass for damn. I believe these are the Berdan Prime ones for they're on my bench. They are. Fits in nicely. Extracts just fine. So, also I should point out the receiver, nose cap, arm, and the rear sight are matching. The other thing they did was put a pin here so you can't use the sight elevator on the rear sight. Bolt is not matching, but it is low serial numbered. So, take that out. Pop the handguard off. And then proceed. Safety also works on this gun. Flip this around for the camera. Take this off. Definitely some pits in there, but most of it's been gone over at a refurb at some time. But considering where it's been, what's life, life is no doubt seen, still works. There's that. It's missing the screw that goes through here, but it does have this one here, so. Not a big deal. Comes that. That comes off. There's a little bit of rust there, but nothing crazy. Ooh, electrical tape. Let's see what's hiding under here. Really hiding there. See a big bit of a chunk of wood right there that's gone. But not the end of the world. 
core stock's good. All right, slight camera difficulty there, folks. I'm just going to continue on here. Get this one out. That's out. I already did pre-loosen these. Didn't need much. What they done to get that wooden block in there? Put two dowels in it. Let me see if I can get that in the light. In front of each one of my fingers there, as well as here. Underneath though, the wood looks pretty nice shape. Just on the outside, she's got some dings and dangs and stuff from use. Under here. That like pits all over the barrel. You got one little canker here. It's the only thing that'd be of note. Um, but being 410 is not a big deal. Barrel stamped E slash 07 on the underside. A few other marks. But what they've done back here for the um, for the metal tray, the feed plate, is they put two rivets in. There and there. And the same on the other side, there and there. And that's how that's all held in. The paint does scratch, a little bit comes off, but it seems to be pretty good overall. And insofar as what's under the butt plate here, which is a very smaller bit, the, um, it is dented a little. There. I use a, a Jet 720-360 screwdriver for the Enfield butt stops. It goes in all the way and you get good grip. So that comes off. I always like to take the bolts out, get, um, clean them up because they're usually rusty, and uh, put some grease on before putting them back in. This one, of course, is no exception. Plenty of nastiness there, but it's there and it works. Stock markings in this particular example, there's an S right here and a couple inspector marks up here. It's an IAS with an arrow here and a 25 that's upside down right here. But all in all, the stock's in good shape, can't complain. Sling is a military issue one. And as far as the rest is concerned, just a light cleanup and greasing, and she'll be good to go. I am making ammo up using not these, but other 303 cases. Um, just a simple fire forming load with some wax in the end here. Give her a try. Hopefully get a video of that in the near future. Also, that same paint is what's under the nose cap here. That same kind of paint. Something to note. And bayonet, this one's in really rough shape. Still fits. I'm going to clean her up here, put her back together, and hopefully get her to the range in the near future. Any questions, comments, rude, rude remarks, feel free to leave them in the comments. Have a good one.